Hi everyone, welcome to the first video in English on my channel. Today I'm going to try a reasonably difficult puzzle. Um, this is on Lee Chess. My current Lee Chess puzzle rating is 2500 and this is normal difficulty so it should be around that level. So it's not going to be the most exciting video to watch but what I hope to do is to show what type of thought, what I'm thinking as I'm trying to solve this puzzle. And it's also for me to be able to see in future, to look back in future and see what my level was like and see how I'm improving, hopefully. So this is the first time I'm seeing this position. It's we are white, white to move, black's just played knight takes e5. <clears throat> so I do a quick, uh, bueno, uh, bueno, I do a quick count of material. Uh, so three pieces each, seven pawns for black, we're down a pawn. Kings, okay, I look for any immediate checks. So for white, we've got one check, which does nothing. And black has one check, two checks, which don't do too much either. So captures is my next thought. So this is the obvious capture in the position, right? There's also rook takes. Bishop takes g6 is another capture, knight takes d5 is another capture. So there are all the captures. <clears throat> and threats. Threats are like attacks, basically. So for example, knight here would threaten the bishop. So that's an, a, an example of a threat. Uh, the other pretty big, well, attacks on the queen are basically the biggest threat apart from threatening checkmate. After threatening checkmate, uh, threats on the queen are pretty important to always consider, right? So bishop h6 is something that comes to mind. Maybe now, but also in future lines, right? Where maybe there's problems on the back rank. So king safeties, right, blacks is a bit weaker, right? Because the dark squares are weak and the bishop is over here. We need at least two moves to come back. So it makes me think it's something to do with the dark squares. But first of all, we'll calculate the capture. Bishop takes, forces, rook takes. Always calculate in between checks. But in this case, it's irrelevant. It's not, doesn't do anything. <clears throat> so after rook takes, in this new position, we look at checks, right? It's still the queen takes h7 check. But there's a new check, which is queen d8 check. And in that position, the king can't move, and so black has to block, either retreating with the rook, which would just lose a rook, the rook wouldn't be protected. So black has to block on f8. So for example, bishop f8, so just to go through it quickly, rook takes, rook takes, uh, bishop takes, e5, rook takes, queen d8, bishop f8. Uh, in that position, I'm calculating rook takes rook, which forces queen takes rook. And I don't see any follow-up to pre pressure the f8 bishop, which is pinned. We don't have rook e1, for example, because it's undefended here. But this line seems promising, maybe changing the order or um, stopping at certain points. Naroditsky, one of my favorite YouTubers, he always talks about returning to the um, position in the combination or sequence where you last had an option or choice. So, for example, if that line didn't work, doesn't work, I'll look at uh, the first point where I could have done something different. <clears throat> but first of all, I want to change the order. So look at rook takes. They're the two obvious captures in the position, right? Bishop takes and rook takes. If we start with rook takes, queen still can't take, so rook has to take. And now we do the same thing. Queen d8 check. Again, the rook can't block because we take it which means they have to block on f8. Let's start with bishop blocks, because usually in chess you want to, if there's a, a job, 
you want to try and do it with the least valuable piece, right? The queen's very strong, valuable. You don't want to have it um, have it relegated to a role, such a passive role, right? Even though it does look like it forces a queen trade. So maybe that ha it has that going for it, right? We're attacking and we just um, sacrificed the um, exchange, didn't we? Yeah, rook takes, rook takes. So we're down on the exchange, right? <clears throat> so black wants to trade piece pieces. But anyway, rook takes, e5, rook takes, queen d8, bishop f8. The arrows annoy me, so I'll draw them when I'm showing the line, but not when I'm calculating, because they sort of mess with my calculation. I can't, I don't know, I just get jumbled up. So queen's here, bishop's here, and rook's here, right? So in that position, Can we pressure bishop? We don't have bishop h6 because queen just takes. And we don't have rook e1 again because rook just takes. So the bishop's pinned. Not so easy. So rook takes, rook takes. Queen d8, bishop blocks. Not seeing anything. We can win the exchange back, right? We're down in exchange, but we then can just take take the rook. But after queen takes, I'm not seeing anything. <clears throat> I'm looking quickly to see if there's a way to get the knight involved or even the bishop, but it doesn't seem so. So again, I'm looking at options to change the order or to get the other rook involved, right? on the back rank. Um, can I quickly look at this line again? Rook takes, no, bishop takes, rook takes, queen here, blocks. Um, I really want to get the other rook involved. Ah. No, it seems a bit slow. I was thinking to take the rook, and after queen takes, king f1, threatening rook e1 and rook e8. But in any case, the queen can just go back, right? The g7 to defend the pinned piece. Or even after king f1 in that line, they have queen e7. Bishop defends the queen. And in this line, rook takes, rook takes. Queen e8, bishop blocks. Hmm. Bishop takes, queen takes. It's the transposition, right? Which is transposed. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly look at the other big threats. Okay, should have pointed out right at the start, undefended pieces, right? Bishop and rook are undefended. This is defended, but under pressure, right? Attack twice, defended twice. So this undefended rook gives me either the idea of bishop g5, threatening bishop f6, which would... We're also threatening... No, we don't have f4 because of the pin. So this would threaten bishop f6, attacking the knight, the queen no longer defends the knight, right? So we have to see if black has a defense. They can't move the knight because the rook falls. So, for example, and h6 just allows us to continue with the plan. So they need to defend the knight to as prophylaxis against bishop f6, right? So bishop g5, counterattack our queen. They can't. Checks again, they do have, but it doesn't lead anywhere. Although, no, but then they would have if king takes, they would have knight takes, and that and we take, and then they can <clears throat> get out of the pin, but they have sacrificed the bishop, right? So, bishop g5, threatening bishop f6, um, which would basically be called removal of the defender, right? Because the queen defends the knight. Bishop here would stop that. 
So, what about bishop d6 to over defend the knight? And then we play bishop f6, queen has to go to f8. And in that position, then the bishop is no longer pinning the pawn, so we'd have f4, for example. But I think there's just. Um, because if knight takes, we have an in between check on e8. Queen takes, pawn takes. I don't see anything there. Bishop g5, bishop d6. Okay, I'm also noting the queen is very short on square, so h, bishop h6, I probably should have calculated before bishop g5, because it's even more forcing. Right? The queen has one square, h8. Okay. Now, the queen's still defending the knight, but the rook is tied down to the back rank. So that gives me ideas of rook takes knight. No, because they still have bishop f8 anyway, and queen takes, obviously. Bishop h6, queen h8. <coughs> Missing something. Hmm. What about rook takes, rook, uh, rook takes, and bishop h6 there, which still forces queen h8, and then queen d8. Okay, that looks very promising. So I had to like change the order, combine ideas. They start with rook takes, which is one of the first forcing moves. So again, I should have followed Naroditsky's advice, right? The first option, the first point where you have a choice, you research, you look again, you try other moves in that position, right? In this position, we have another option, which isn't queen d8 or bishop takes. We have bishop h6, which again forces queen h8. They can counterattack our queen with rook here. But then we have queen check, winning the queen, right? Queen can't block because the bishop would take on f8. Bishop has to block, we take on g7. So rook takes e5, rook takes, bishop h6, queen h8, and queen d8 in that line. Rook can't block because we take it for free. And bishop f8, queen takes f8, right? Checkmate. Rook takes, bishop h6, I should be going a bit slower, because in a game, even if you've calculated everything, you always pause, always. Maybe there's some random check that I should have looked at more carefully. It's always worth checking, but here, they just give up the queen, I make sure there's no back rank checks, mates, sorry. Um, this check doesn't do anything, so we take the queen, and that's it. Okay. Just one, almost 15 minutes, so hopefully that was interesting in a way. That was a pretty tough problem. If we go back, we can see, if I do it again, wait, I have to click off this, go to next puzzle immediately, so I can see the ranking, uh, the evaluation. So 2580 rated puzzle. Pretty, I guess the tricky bit is first taking with the rook, you have to see the back rank ideas. And you have to see that bishop h6 is very strong because queen is forced back. That's something I need to be able to see quicker. Like it's very forcing. So captures are obviously forcing, but as I mentioned at the start, attacks on the queen are the biggest threat after threatening checkmate. So hopefully you got something out of that video. And like and subscribe, that would be great. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.